Jose? Don't do anything. Yes. <laughs> Don't touch anything more. Okay. Last two more minutes. Okay. Control your laugh and mute yourself, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right. Good luck. Oh, okay, we have three minutes. And so I will share my screen first uh, because I'll introduce the session. And we start with the polling. We normally give a minute and a half to two minutes for the poll to understand who's there. And then I will introduce Paco as the first speaker and then so on and so forth. Okay, I can see. Okay. Oh, attendees were, were able to come in. Are they in? Oh my gosh, we have 64. Sorry. <laughs> So have we started, Jazz? Yes. OK. All right. So now we have about 66 people on the, on the waiting room. Well, it's not a waiting room. They're live, seeing all our exchanges, Kelvin and your laugh. Let's just wait a few minutes for everybody to come in. Uh, we had about 100 just as of last count. How many registered? 174. OK. We now actually have 180 registrants. Okay, well, it's two o'clock and I think uh, we should begin in a few seconds. We have 74 people in the room and okay. So I think I will, I will start. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Mai Floor and welcome to the fourth installment of our five series webinar on digital technology uh, in the water and wastewater sector. Uh, you will note that this is the fourth of a series of five and our next one will be held on November 4 and we hope that you will join us for that as well. Just a quick uh, reminder to all, for, for those of us who are not yet too familiar with Zoom at this time, uh, just to show you that all of you have been muted. It is a question. Please note uh, the Q&A box marked in a, a green arrow. Please write all of your questions there. For any, these are questions to the speakers. And for any logistical concerns to the organizers, that's, that's us, please use the chat box. Um, today is on uh, digital uh, transformation for, towards a digital integrated water meter management. Um, and that's the session that we will be discussing today. Uh, it's taking off from the commercial loss uh, management session that we had two weeks ago. We are very uh, happy to have uh, two excellent speakers today. But before all that, I'd like to start with a, an, a polling of the audience just to understand who has joined us uh, this afternoon and for us to better understand also and target our presentations in future to your needs. So I encourage all of you to please participate in this poll. There are five questions, so don't forget to scroll down. I'll give you about a minute and a half to participate in this poll. We have 92 participants with us at the moment, so appreciate if you could there are very few of you answering, so I encourage you to please respond.
I can see that quite a number of uh, participants are male, uh, more or less mid-age, between 40 and 50. Quite a number of people from both the private sector and government sector. And mostly the mid-level and technical level uh, positions in the company, although quite a number of executives as well. Uh, and as before, the expectations are high on the first two to understand what digital transformation in urban water supply and sanitation operations means and to understand design and implementation concepts of digital transformation. Okay, with that, thank you very much for all your, your responses. Uh, here is the result, here are the results. 57% uh, male, 30% between the age of 40 and 50, 50 52% uh, from government, 38% uh, technical, and most of you, 53% on the first bullet uh, on the expectations. Okay, with that, uh, please, I'd like to now close that poll, and I would like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, we have two speakers, as mentioned. There will be Q&A in between, um, right after the speakers another polling after the second speaker. And of course, as mentioned, as always, we would have uh, Arjun wrapping up at the end. So to introduce our first speaker, we have uh, with us Dr. Francisco Arregui. He is uh, an integrated meter management specialist and has worked in many, many countries across the globe. I've been lucky enough to have met Paco because he had worked here in Manila uh, it, with one of the largest utilities uh, in the country. Um, and he is also an associated professor at the University Pol Polytechnic University of Valencia. I, I wasn't going to attempt that in Spanish. Um, and he has had long experience in specifically in the field of integrated meter management. Um, you can see quite a number of countries that he has worked in. Uh, in Asia, he's worked in both the Jakarta and uh, Manila projects for then uh, what was called MIA. Okay, so without further ado, uh, Dr. Francisco Aregui, please uh, share your screen. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mike. For, uh, for the introduction. Um, I will share, if you don't, okay, my screen. Uh, okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, for, first of all, I would like to, to, to thank uh, Waterlink for the invitation to participate in, in, in this event. And for, the, for this event, I'm trying to talk a little bit how we can prepare our water utilities for the digital transformation and the applications, uh, digital applications that we may be using in, in, in the future. Uh, if we think about uh, sustainability of a, of a water utility, uh, we always think about reducing water losses uh, because that's probably the, the most uh, efficient way to, to make sustainable uh, a, a water company. So uh, within the water losses, uh, I will mainly focus in what we can do to, to reduce uh, and to optimize uh, the level of commercial, commercial losses. We all already know by this time that uh, commercial losses can be composed of three components, unauthorized consumption, of course, customer meters inaccuracies that is related to the uh, inabilities of the meters to measure the whole, the, the water consumption, the 100% consumption of, of, of the customers. And of course, there is some uh, data handling errors that is, uh, uh, are caused by the inability of the water utilities and in the end to, to properly uh, process all the data from, from, from the billing. Uh, also, if we think like in the real losses, if we think about the different levels that we can reach with commercial level uh, losses, 
we 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 can have always like a minimum and for me that's uh, an important part that we realize that the minimum it will never be zero percent those uh, all meters have technical limitations no matter how good the meter is there will always be technical limitations for the meters that uh, will not allow to register 100 percent of the consumption so uh, we we should not target to to go for the minimum because that's something that like the same as in real doses that's uh, an, an economic for us so and there is also an economic level of 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 losses that that's the 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 that should be our target we should look for that economic level that balances out how much we are expending how uh, and how many losses we have we have in the in, in the in, in the system and of course then we have the actual levels that that is uh, our current level of losses that it depends on the management practice that we are having uh, at this moment uh, most of the time, this actual level of losses is higher than the economic level. Although I have found in some utilities that they are usually public utilities that they have a lot of budget to replace meter. And those utilities, but very, very few, they have an economic level, uh, an actual level that was lower than the economic level. Also, if somebody is uh, interested to, to have details on how to reach the economic level of, uh, of losses, you can download a, a paper that we published like uh, two years ago. It, it's free for download. So if everybody wants the details of how to reach this economic level of upper end losses, uh, you can have the details in, 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 this, in this link, in that paper. Okay. For the minimum level of commercial losses, uh, for me, it's very, very important that we realize, as I said, that the minimum level will never be 0%. I have, made, I, I have seen many water utilities saying that they have a commercial level of losses that it, it was close to zero percent even one percent and that's not realistic uh, there are technical limitations of the of the meters that uh, make us to have at least a minus two percent of uh, of losses at least i'm saying that's the, the 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 minimum amount that we have if we buy the best meters in the market and we do things right. Then, of course, we have some level of unauthorized consumption that that level can be as high as, depending on the, on the type of city we are living, it can be very high or it can be very, very uh, small. But I mean, unauthorized consumption is always present and uh, we don't know how much it is, but for sure it will not be 0%. And finally, we have a uh, data handling that uh, digital tools and digital application can help us to reduce and we can try to reach zero uh, percent here on the right you have more or less like estimates uh, of what cannot be targeting for the minimum amount of losses depending on the on the technology of the meters that uh, that we use for example if i use single jet multi-jet meters the the very best they can do is minus three minus six percent in the worst case scenario so it depends on the technology we use. This minimum, depending on the technical limitations, will be higher or will be a little bit lower. But for sure, it will never be 0%. When we are reaching, trying to, uh, to reach the economic level of, of losses, um, I'm going to simplify this a lot because we only have 20 minutes presentation. But in the end, what we have to do or we, we should try to do is to reach the equilibrium between the how much the meter and its installation is costing us and how much revenue we are getting from that meter and when we leave uh, when we reach that equilibrium we have the useful life of the meter which is basically defined as the uh, the 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 life that the meter should be installed to produce the most revenue for the water utility when we reach that equilibrium that's the useful life and what happens when we implement or we introduce a digitalization in the water utility and we start using digital tools that uh, help us to 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 reduce uh, commercial losses then we have an extra cost that is added to the meter and their installation and then we have to 
compensate that extra cost with an extra revenue. That means that we will need to have uh, uh, more or to obtain more from, from the meters. So digital um, applications are very good, but of course, to, uh, we, we will always need to obtain a benefit, an extra benefit from, um, from the applications and the tools to, to be able to, to really compensate that, uh, the extra cost. Uh, if we think about a uh, water utility in which customers have uh, very little consumption or which uh, the, in, in which the tariff is very low, uh, we will realize that the introduction of digital tools and application is very difficult to justify. But there are some other countries and some other uh, utilities that have very reasonable prices of water and digital, uh, digitalization and, and software tools tools can really, really help us to increase the revenue. And that's where uh, we should be targeting, as I will present later in, 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 in this presentation today. So what can we do to, um, to achieve the economic level of losses? Uh, first of all, we have to think that uh, we, to, to reach that economic le level, we will need to take different ac actions that are really uh, correlated uh, to each other. Uh, I, I, I always call it the integrated water meter management cycle because it's like a never end cycle in which all the, uh, the activities that you conduct are uh, feeding the, with information other activities uh, that I take in the future and everything is, everything is related. But uh, yes, in making a quick, taking a quick look to, to, to this uh, cycle. First of all, what we found here is the, uh, the, the first problem that we face when we have to, to, to manage water meters. Basically, what do I buy and what type of meters do I, uh, do I have to, to install in, 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 in my water utility? And the, the, the general reflections here are the first one that the cheapest is not always the best option because uh, and, uh, when we account for the total for the cost of the meter, we, we should not all, uh, only account for the installation and the acquisition cost. We should also account for the uh, cost of the meat, uh, of the um, of the water that is not measured by the water meter. And this is a problem, especially when we think about uh, biddings and international biddings when we have to 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 buy meters because. Uh, if, if the cheapest meters is not always the, the best option, what do I do to protect myself against a low quality and low cost meters? Because in most cases, they have more chances to win the bidding if I don't prepare the documents properly. The second thing is that you have to diversify. You should not put all eggs in the same, in the same canister. Uh, you, you need to diversify and at least use two, three different brands to allow you to compare and to have a, and to have a big feedback. Also to reduce risk. If there's a problem with one brand, it's not the same having a problem with 100% of the meters or having a problem with only 50% of the meters. And also think that uh, the problems that we will be facing when we select the, the meter is not, they are not only related to the metrology, to the errors of the meter, the measuring errors, but there are some other factors that uh, make us uh, select the, uh, uh, another meter, a uh, different meter. For example, things as, as stupid as like having the, the, a broken glass of the meter that like completely uh, breaks the, the meter and it is not useful anymore or maybe the tampering, or maybe a, a excess pressures in the system. So there are other things, not only the errors, that uh, will uh, change our decisions about what, the, what meter is best for our water utility. The second thing, we have to make sure that whatever we buy, it corresponds to the quality we are expecting. And to do that, we need to, to introduce quality control tests as uh, comprehensive as depending on the, uh, how much we trust the uh, meter provider, the, the meter manufacturer. 
Of course, we can buy the best meters, we can uh, have a very strict co quality control, but if we do not improve the installation sites, we will have problems. So one thing that we need to do, of course, is to make sure all meters are properly installed, protected, not only about tampering, but also about uh, uh, environmental conditions and other type of effects that may uh, affect the, the long-term performance of, of the meter. The re reduced data handling, here is where the digital applications and digital cool, uh, tools can really help us in reduce data handling errors. As I said, most of the data handling is, uh, are derived because we are estimating readings. We don't have real readings from the meters and we have to do some uh, processing in, 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 in the billing system. And, and we have to try to reduce that as much as possible. We need to go to the field, and that's why I put it here first, because uh, we need to know what is happening in the, in, in the field. So to reduce tampering and to reduce unauthorized connections and consumption, and also to uh, increase the useful life of the meters, we need to see how are the installation sites, how are the meters doing in the field, and what is happening there, just to improve what is uh, the, the installation sites, as I said here. The second thing, or the very the, the, the next thing to do is that we need to know how meters are conducting. We need to know which uh, variables, which uh, uh, parameters are affecting the, the performance of our meters. And for that, we need to test. And this testing is very important when I introduce digital applications, because in the end, all the results that uh, will tell us, for example, if, a, if, if a, a, a digital application is telling me when to replace a meter, most of those uh, methodologies and algorithms use the degradation rate, how fast the, the meters are degrading. If I don't have information, I can use general or standard uh, degradation rates, but I will not have the degradation rate of the meters that I'm using in my water utility. Well, so we really need to understand what is going on with the meters we are using in the field. And also it helps us to decide which meter is best, is fitting, will fit best in our water utility because there are maybe issues with the water quality. There are issues maybe because of the sun that is hitting directly the, the glass of the, of the meter. So it's, it's unreadable anymore. So there are many different types of issues that are, is affecting the, the, the metrology, the errors of, the, uh, of our meters. And we need to do and we need to, to know what is happening. So that's why we need to test meters in the laboratory. And finally, with all the information that we have from the field, from the laboratory, from the commercial database, we can design a replacement program and then the, again decide which meter, which meter is uh, best for, for, for us. And this is a cycle that is not something that you can implement in just three months, six months. This is a, a long-term uh, project in which you are introducing little things and you have to, to change the mentality of many uh, people in the company to, to have all those things done properly because I can like propose the methodology, I can propose the, the, the procedures and I can propose many, many things, but I need the support of every part, everybody in the company to, to, be, uh, to be able to, uh, to implement all this new methodology properly because otherwise it will not be uh, it, it, would, it will not be successful. So how can digital transformation and digital applications help to reduce commercial losses? First of all, we have to think that those are tools that help us to simplify our daily work. And they can automatically, when I say automatically, is like without uh, almost any intervention in our side, uh, except for the, the settings maybe, uh, they can help us to calculate which is the optimum time to replace the meter, which is the, the useful life of in the, each individual meter. That's a very, and, it, it, and to calculate this, it takes a, into account the fixed cost, the measured water cost, and just to have a, a, a minimum total cost. It can help once I know the, the, which is the useful life of all meters, I can have a forecast of how many meters I will be uh, needing every year. So it can help us in, in, in to define which are the meter requirement for the following years. 
I can compare the, the, uh, the, the, the register volume of several brands. That's why I was saying, okay, don't install only one brand. Maybe you need to install two or three brands. And then you are starting to install them and you compare and you see how the trends of a uh, register volume of these different brands evolve with time. And then you can decide, oh, this brand is, is, is performing better than this other. So I stop buying this one and then I, I, I buy more of these other meters. And also we can have like, when you we look at in the long term, we can have like uh, identify uh, meters that are underperforming. They have an underperforming trend a long time. So uh, we can say, oh, this meter is not, something happening here and the, the, the digital applications can identify these customers and these meters automatically without us having to look individually to each one of them. So it's helping us to, uh, to, to save time to uh, identify this and to, to put a solution to this type of meters. The second thing, we can also have a uh, the, we can check the effectiveness of the replacement policy. Sometimes I have found many water utilities that when they replace meters, they found themselves that they are not increasing uh, the register water because they are like the maybe the, the, the previous meters they have uh, they have over registration and then when you replace meters they, they, that they are measuring close to minus one, minus two percent, they register less volume than the previous one. So in the end, the, these applications can also help, uh, help us to analyze the effectiveness of what we are doing. And of course, just to, to check that the meters that we use, they are properly sized or not. Maybe we are selecting meters that are undersized, they are uh, too small for the amount of consumption of the customers, or maybe they are oversight, they are too, too big. All those things, you see, there are many, many different uh, advantages in, in, in using digital applications. Here is a list of all the uh, of, uh, of advantages that I, I could come off. Of course, there are many, many others, but uh, what we have to think is that uh, these applications uh, can help us, but uh, how can I be prepared to introduce them in my system? And here I'm talking from, from the experience of, uh, of me uh, helping to develop an, an application for water meter management. This is a digital application that uh, uh, allows you to do all this, those things that I have, uh, I, I have mentioned before. But uh, so all the experiences that uh, we have found in, in, the, in the places we have, where we have implemented the, 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 the application is what it comes here. That digital application uh, can help us to reduce commercial losses. But we, we, we should never forget that we have many different data sources. Those applications use this data from all these sources to, they have their own algorithms, they artificial intelligence, they can be very, very clever, but in the end, what they are using is the data sources, uh, and depending on the quality of those data sources, they will, they will tell us where, which way to go. So if the data that we use is not good, then uh, the algorithms will not be able to do anything, and they could lead us to the wrong way. And you have to think that all these uh, calculations are conducted automatically. So uh, we, uh, you, 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 you should not allow the, 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 the algorithms to be fed with data that is not uh, correct. So you always have to keep in mind that garbage in, garbage out. So the first thing I can do uh, or I should do before I implement all this digital tools and all those digital applications is to work in improving my data quality. What does it mean? I have to have the meter test results uh, in a proper database store. I have to check the consistency of the commercial database. I should uh, have uh, all the, the billings and the readings and all information about the meters properly stored. So if I have all that things put together and 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 verified before I introduce uh, applications, uh, digital applications, the results of the application, whenever I introduce them, will be correct. Otherwise, I can buy as much as I want in a very complex uh, digital application, but in the end, the results that I will have 
will not be uh, correct. And uh, this is just all what I wanted to, to explain here. And uh, I'm open to the questions and to the discussion after the, the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paco, uh, for an excellent presentation. We already have some questions for you. Uh, one question, uh, what are additional data besides build data to determine meter size? Uh, well, you could have, a, if you have a AMR equipment, you could have, of course, the, the hourly consumption, and that would be a, a, proper sizing of the meter more accurate. But uh, of course you will need the technology of the meter, the size of the meter that you have already stolen, and, and especially uh, the information about consumption. Of course, there is some uh, digital meters that uh, give you which is the maximum flow rate through the meter and the minimum, and with that uh, information that it can help you to, to, to size the meter. But uh, if, if you don't have that, uh, billing data is the only thing that you, you have available. And maybe uh, the consumption is characteristic because if, you, if, if the customer have a, 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 a tank, a storage tank, then of course the, the flow rates are laminated. Okay, uh, another question, which is always brought up actually, you may or may not answer. In your experience, which brand and type of meter is most accurate? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question without really a, 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 a single answer. Uh, because the same meter in different places may perform completely different. I've seen that. So there's not one single uh, one meter that said this is best for every, everywhere. And also, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, it's not only metrology what we should take into account. There are some other factors that we need to take into account when selecting the meter. So we can buy a very expensive digital meter that the metrology is very good, but then suddenly it's very easy to, for the customers to tamper or to break, and then that's not good for us. So it depends on the place. Not, no answer to this, to this question, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, no, no specific brand, but you did answer it. Um, and what is the normal useful life of a water meter? It, it really depends on the tariff. It depends on the tariff, uh, but usually it tends to be between eight to 12, 14 years. The lower the tariff, the longer the useful life. If you have a very expensive tariff, I've seen places where you have to replace meters every six years. Also, that's for the residential meters. For the non-residential meters, the larger sizes uh, typically tend to have a, a useful life which are much lower. So for example, at DN100, the useful life may be four, three, five years. So it depends on the size. The amount of consumption, the tariff, basically. Those are the three. Okay. Yeah. And what are the advantages of using uh, electromagnetic flow meters? Electromagnetic flow meters, uh, the metrology is very good. Uh, uh, they don't have moving parts, so in that sense, they can they can be uh, very the, the metrology can be very very stable. And that's the, the main advantage of the, of the meters. The disadvantages could be the cost, the batteries, and then there are other factors that, uh, that at this moment we don't know. And it has to do with the, long, the durability of the, of the meters on the long term. So there's a still, uh, as I say in Spanish, the experiments, you do it with uh, Coke at home. <laughs> okay. So, okay. And what kind of water meter is appropriate for low pressures? As you know, in Asia, that's a very common problem. Yeah. Uh, for sure, uh, static meters are not the solution. Ultrasonic and electromagnetic meters, I don't think they are the solution. Uh, mechanical meters, they can work with pressures uh, up to, uh, I mean, the lowest pressure is like point, uh, three meters, more or less, that's the lowest pressure. If you have air, they will measure the air as it was more or less water. So you will have an over registration because you will be charging air as if it was water and that's no solution for that. But if you install ultrasonic and electromagnetic meters to solve that problem, you will be facing that at some point where you have a mixture of water and air, the meter will not be measured. So you will have under registration. So there's no, no good solution for that, sorry. <laughs> okay, 
Um, so you, you just have to have better pressure, is that it? Exactly. At okay. least uh, to have w uh, one bar pressure in the system. One bar, That's okay. Right. Yeah, and what kind okay. of meter is appropriate? Sorry, does the size of the meter affect the flow of water? The, of course, there is the head loss. Uh, the amount of, of, of pressure drop will depend on the, on the size and which is the maximum flow rate. But uh, uh, by standards, at maximum flow rate, the, the pressure drop is one bar. Uh, and that happens uh, with almost all type of meters, so residential meters, if, even if they don't have moving parts, more or less, because of the size of the, of the, the hole. But uh, uh, yes, uh, the, the size of the, of the meter uh, really changes the pressure drop and can lower the pressure at the customer's uh, facilities, of course. Uh, so this next question is over my head, but I'm sure you can understand. How about full bore ultrasonic FM compared to full bore EMF with regards to accuracy drift? Uh, uh, the full bore, uh, the, the problem with full bore is that uh, if you install a full bore ultrasonic and then you don't reduce the diameter of the, of the meter, uh, in most occasions, those meters are oversized and they will have a lower, um, a lower fl low flow sensitivity. And so you would may have problems at low flows. Uh, from my point of view, uh, for large or medium diameter, I prefer ultrasonic because of the de earthing of the, of, of the el electromagnetic meters. That's the, and also the, the battery duration. But that's a, a personal opinion. It's not, uh, I mean, there's some people that may disagree. But if I were to install um, a, a, a meter for, I would prefer to install an ultrasonic, a full bore ultrasonic meter, properly installed. Another question is how accurate would a meter be when the flow is intermittent? When, well, uh, we are. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I just published like one, two months ago, a paper on that, on, on intermittent flows. Um, we are having experiences on that and probably, uh, well, we have detected that some uh, static meters, ultrasonic meters mainly, because they, they have the sampling frequency, which is lower. Uh, they can have under registrations of two, 3% in the field. Because, uh, but it depends on the, the algorithms. Not all brands perform in the same way, but there is an issue there, especially for domestic meters. Uh, and it's still, uh, we, we need to do more research on that because it's not very, very clear, but it clearly affects uh, how the consumption of customers are measured. Not only intermittent flow, but also when the, the flow, the consumption flow is changing. For example, if I, op I have one faucet open and then suddenly I open another one. So mm -hmm. that also uh, influences uh, ultrasonic meters. It would be good, Paco, if you could type in into the chat box for everyone uh, a okay. link to your paper or maybe an, uh, if you could attach your paper that you published last month uh, that you referred to, that would be most helpful. A okay. final question for you, although I encourage you to answer those that are still pending uh, on the chat. But a final question would be um, choosing between electromagnetic meter and insertion type flow meter, which do you recommend for automation slash digitalization? Uh, I mean, no electromagnetic. If, if you have the opportunity to install a full board electromagnetic meter, instead of an insertion, of course, I will always go for the electromagnetic for sure. Of course, it's more expensive. The problem is in many places, you, you cannot really uh, cut the pipe and install a full bore electromagnetic meter. But if you, if you install, and then the, your only opportunity to install a flow meter is maybe to, to tap in the, the pipe and to install an insertion proof. But that's, a, so it's, that's your only opportunity. But if you have the, the opportunity of selecting either of them, I would go for a, a full bore electromagnetic meter with no doubt. Okay, great. So if you can afford it, go of for course, it. Of course, that's okay. exactly. So with that, uh, Papa, thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, I encourage you to please uh, respond to the many, many questions that are pending on the Q&A box. 
uh, and there are also some on the chat box. Um, to the audience, I please I would like to remind you that all questions to speakers should be on the Q and A box because the chat box is really more for logistical concerns if video or audio is is having uh, a problem. I'd like to now move on to the next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is from Xylem, uh, Mr. Kelvin Chi. Uh, did, am I sharing my screen now? Uh, let me see. Okay, sorry. So Kelvin Chi is a sales director for Xylem. Um, he's uh, taking care of the metro metrology business for Southeast Asia and North Asia um, and is uh, with Census, and Census is a Xylem brand, and it provides a complete range of water meters and AMI, AMR solutions for the water industry. Um, Kelvin uh, has been with Xylem not too long, uh, because I suppose uh, Census is a newish brand, if I may. Um, and so Kelvin, uh, please, floor is yours. All right, if you can share thank you, May. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, May, for the introduction. So I will share screen now. Can you see my screen? Hello. All good, all good, uh, Kelvin, we can good. see. Okay, all right. All right, so yeah, again, uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I just want to spend time to talk about uh, a bit more about the uh, smart metering system, in particular, um, expanding into the static meters uh, technology, whereby um, just now, um, uh, Paco had actually um, mentioned that um, Free about different kinds of meter technology, be it mechanical or um, static. Yeah. So and I and this meters, I think, is very suitable um, to be used for digital because being digital meters it actually is future proof, and this will actually uh, helps to address a lot of the so called the uh, commercial losses because they are very accurate meters. So later on, I will basically um, a few slides I will share with you more on the public technology. Um, and so they can understand more about how it actually works. Second thing uh, is that I want to also touch about communications because uh, communication is um, very important. Um, being a smart meters, I think one of the requirements to be a smart meter is that it must also have this uh, communication capability to um, allow the data to be extracted and sent to the end system. Yeah. So without the uh, communication system, basically, um, you are not able to um, get. You yeah, are basically having a lot of missing data, not to mention bad data. So this is again it's very important. Uh, of course, lastly, I will talk about uh, share with you three case studies to further reinforce um, the uh, smart static meters to get it with the communication technology. How can it help utilities um, to address uh, apparent loss or commercial loss? Yeah. So this is something I want to uh, share with you, with you folks. Right, so for start, I will want to uh, share with you this uh, electromagnetic uh, principle for our residential uh, centimeters. In fact, it's been, it's been around for more than about eight years. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you folks are familiar with the electromagnetic principle. How does it work? Yeah, so I just have a, a simple slide show to show you basically the principle behind it. So as you know, uh, is that in the water, you have the negative and positive charge ions. So when it goes through the uh, magnetic force of field, basically the positive and negative charge is separated and then attract to the electrodes. In this case, uh, negative to the blue, positive to the red. Can you guys hear me? Is my voice uh, uh, soft? I have someone telling me my, my voice is on and off. 
Um, your your audio is uh, moving up and down, uh, so okay. you okay. you sometimes oh. disappear. Yeah. All right. Sorry. So probably it's the Wi-Fi issue. Or right. so I probably have to speak a bit slower. Yeah. Um, right. So this principle is very similar uh, to uh, to any electromagnetic um, meters. So it's basically um, following the Faraday law. And the, one, the important aspect of our static meter is that we are using battery power. And I want to emphasize that for uh, our this uh, static meter technology, the battery life that is powering this uh, measurement, uh, it can last up to 15 years. So the design has actually catered to all this consideration of our power consumption on the uh, measurement itself. And I want to also mention that the measurement itself is at least two samples per second. So you, this uh, meter is actually measuring almost through real time. So you can imagine that the accuracy is very accurate because of this uh, uh, ability to measure, to do so many sampling per second. Right. So the next slide uh, about the residential static meter, again, you can see that the uh, meter itself uh, is a composite body. And the meter not only may do, the battery power not only provide power for the measurement, it also provide the power tool for the internal data logger, which is doing the uh, monitoring of all the critical data on the water flowing through the meter. Things like low flow, leakage flow, burst pipe, or reverse flow. So there's a lot of rich data that's being collected in the smart uh, static meter that whereby you can actually uh, uh, extract this information through communication, the AMR or AMI to the heat end system. And the, uh, the utilities can actually have far more insight of what's happening in your network. And there, from there, it can actually helps you to, act, to reduce your so-called commercial loss. That is one positive uh, area. And because of the technology I mentioned earlier on, you we are actually getting about 800 uh, R ratio, which is a turn down ratio, which is Q1 over Q, uh, sorry, Q3 over Q1. So what it means is from this curve is that you can see that the error curve is, is pretty linear and it actually it stretches a long way from the maximum flow down to the minimum flow. So in this aspect, this kind of technology actually allows the customers to be able to measure the flow at very low flow. Therefore, therefore, um, it can actually helps to uh, increase revenue and then helps again on the reducing the apparent loss. And I want to emphasize is that the uh, starting flow, although it's not metrology um, a, a requirement, but it can go as low as one liter per hour. So basically what it means is that even droplets of water yeah, from the uh, inside the uh, home or apartments can be detected by this kind of uh, static meter technology. And basically what we say is that every drop of water count, right? So basically this kind of technology fulfill uh, these needs and requirement. And very important, which I think Paco also mentioned that electromagnetic uh, principle meter typically is uh, having very little drift over time. Yeah, because the one thing is that there's no mo moving parts and the magnetic field is very constant, as you can see the formula earlier on. So it has a very long useful life, not to mention that the battery life, uh, we, it can support up to 15 years. And this 15 years battery life, I again emphasize that not only is doing the measurement, providing power for the data logger, but also radio. So the spark meters, uh, will have was a radio built in to do communication, yeah, which I will talk about a bit more later on. So that is uh, the lifespan of the, the meters and, and this um, uh, battery light is very important for the utilities because you don't want to replace uh, a meter in the field so often. Right. So um, one thing uh, I just want to show this slide is that in uh, many parts of the world, including um, Southeast Asia, is that um, a, a lot of the water qualities in the distribution network is very challenging. So sometimes you may have things like uh, bio slimes, sand particles, you know, things that are not supposed to be in the water, but because of pipe leaking, things like uh, sand get seeped through, and that will end up to 
uh, affect the so-called the traditional mechanical meter performance, especially uh, uh, be it piston or multi-jet. So this is something that will actually wear off the mechanical meter prematurely. Again, it will basically um, uh, reduce the, the meter performance and then you will have this uh, meter under restoration issue ahead of its time. So you may expect the meter to last you seven, 10 years, but maybe the accuracy is uh, it's basically uh, under resistor much earlier, maybe uh, half the time. So this is something uh, uh, that uh, this uh, electromagnetic principle can, meters can actually address and help. And of course, I think just now uh, Paco also mentioned about air water mixture, which is very real uh, problem uh, in some part of the utilities. And the electromagnetic principle is actually far more superior than ultrasonic. Uh, that's the reason why we actually introduced that for the small size meter, because we see more cavitation challenges in small size meter than big size meter. That is why we actually uh, 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 introduce our electromagnetic uh, technology in the, our residential meter, which is the DN15 to DN40. And to address this uh, air water mixture, whereby the uh, electromagnetic uh, meters, which is our IPO, can actually measure more accurately compared to uh, ultrasonic. So with that, now I'm actually going to the CNI static meters. Um, I just want to tell you a bit more is that uh, before I show you the video, uh, is that we're actually using this ultrasonic principle for our large size meters. So for DN50 to 300, we decided to use ultrasonic uh, principle for the large size meter so that it, uh, the customers can actually uh, get more advantage. Right, so you, you have just seen a um, slide uh, videos on our latest uh, product, which is the uh, Cordinal. And I just want to give you a, uh, um, some, highlight some key points on the features again, if you may have missed out. So basically you have a 20 years life uh, span of battery life, uh, again, doing the ultrasonic measurement, which is about two samples per second, using uh, three multiple parts, yeah? 
and it's a bouncing farm. So the, ch the challenge is that we actually uh, extend uh, ultrasonic meters in the CNI because we can have a longer uh, path. And that is very important to get very good accuracy. The longer the path, the better it is. And of course, because of that, we can actually have a longer lock and down ratio, which is R1000. Yeah, again, it's Q3 or Q1, meaning that you can, you can measure down to very low flow, um, which is about 12 meters per hour. And that will help a lot on the NRW. And not to mention is that a lot of the CNI customers actually contribute about, um, which is 20% meters contributing about 80% um, of revenue. So it makes a lot of sense to really measure the low flow so that you have all the revenue is actually kept, captured. Yeah? And of course, uh, because of our, our parabolic film technology, we can actually also have a U0, D0. The same thing goes to our uh, electromagnetic meter um, as well, which is IPO, which is and this views this U0 to zero is very important, especially for the site installation. And and I mentioned I remember Paco also shared slide say that site installation is one of the key considerations because you need to have it compact so that uh you don't want to have any any intermediate accuracy when you do the so-called the installation. So this is very important. One thing I want to highlight also is that the um, all our meters are the data are encrypted. Very important because especially in this uh, digital world, yeah, every system can be hacked. So uh, when we design our smart meters, uh, we have we ensure that we the data leaving the meters is all encrypted so that it will not fall in the wrong hands. Right. So on the data collection um, segment here, I will just probably walk through with you on the mobile readings and fixed network and I'm talking about Wi-Fi wi -Fi and also the, the radio. I will not talk about the wire because it's not covered by today's topic. So basically, um, in our context is that we are using this uh, census RF uh, or the wireless M bus, both using the so-called the wireless free spectrum, uh, be it 433 or 668. Uh, in Asia context, I think it will be probably more 433. And this allows you to really easily communicate with the meters. As I mentioned earlier on, all the rich data, beside metering data, all the monitoring data, uh, be it uh, leakage flow, burst flow, reverse flow are all restored in the meter. So you can actually use this uh, radio to wirelessly uh, to receive all this information. Yeah, sorry, I think I have a voice sound issue again. So I will try to uh, speak slowly again. And for the radios module, um, there are two types of um, methods of uh, installing the radio modules. Obviously, you have a click on module on any traditional mechanical meters, yeah, to have that click on, or that you can have it integral on the meter itself. So that you can have your mechanical meter with the, uh, uh, what we call e-register, a built-in radio or the IPO. So everything is built-in integral. So this uh, integral meter is much better because actually it prevents the uh, meter tampering because with this clip on, a lot of it, uh, I mean the customers or uh, anybody else can just cut the wire, right? Okay. So on the uh, types of metering uh, and monitoring data available, um, you, these are typically the meter data available that you, uh, that you can send. And because we have a data logger built in the meter, uh, we can also uh, monitor all this additional information like the maximum minimum flow, magnetic tampering, back flow, so these are a lot of rich information they store in the meter that you can, the customers can extract to understand more about the, 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 the customer profile and behavior and also do troubleshooting, especially there is a burst pipe or, or leaking pipe. So this uh, is actually a walk-by, drive-by um, system whereby you can use a pen phone or a tablet with a 433 or A68 to communicate with the, with the meters. Yeah? Of course, night of sight will be uh, important for radio. So typically for A66, we are talking about night of sight of 500 meters. If there's any blockage, then the distance will be affected. And this uh, software uh, is very important because you can have a great meters, right? But without a good software, uh, the job is not half done. So we have a software called the Divaso whereby you can 
actually communicate with the meters wirelessly using our sensors RF or the open protocol, which is the wireless and bus. And this um, software basically will do the continuous upload from the meters, and the meters are all sending data every 15 seconds and, all, and will be picked up by the um, phone, typically Android phone, and all things will be uploaded to the server end. So it's a very simple software for collecting the data in the field. Now I'll talk a bit about the um, network. So network, fixed network wise, uh, we have two solutions. Use, it's using either the unlicensed spectrum on the left or the licensed spectrum on the right. So on the licensed spectrum, typically will be 433 uh, megahertz in Asia. You, you can have all the meters installed in the field. Um, and you can just start with the AMR, which is a by drive by. And then if you feel that you are ready, you can actually remain the same meter in the field but just deploy the repeaters or gateway, and then you can straight away jump into the fixed network um, solution. So that so for the meters, why you do not need to re, uh, reinvest an asset on meters. Yeah? So that's the advantage of uh, this kind of smart meters. And for the FlexNet, which is our solution for licensed uh, spectrum, is that this license has to be procured from the authority and it's dedicated uh, frequency. So, a lot of these um, um, smart grid, you can actually use this concept to talk not only on water meters, but also street lighting as well. So this is a, a, a big uh, um, AMI infrastructure uh, solution. Just um, now let's like to show you about the fixed network, uh, which I mentioned earlier on using the license spectrum. Uh, these are all the meters. Um, again, these are all integral radios, so you talk to the gateway directly or through the repeaters. All right. And this solution typically, which gateway can handle up to 3,000 endpoints. Yeah. So this is one of the very simple way of uh, doing a fixed network. And the next one I want to show you is this um, fixed, uh, fixed, net, fixed network. Uh, this is for license spectrum. So uh, again, uh, you can do a lot more. Right, so I will now go to the case study. The first case study I want to share with you is this um, um, fixed network uh, in one of Asia country. Um, this building is about 40 story high. So you can, what happened is that this uh, estate manager wanted to monitor uh, all the common area uh, water meters. Um, and this is how the project started. So you can see that um, there are meters at the ground floor and all the way to the, to the, to the rooftop. And there is a gateway actually located in the middle talking to all the um, meters, uh, either directly or to repeaters. So the success of this store, um, installation is that they actually discover a lot of uh, unauthorized consumption yeah, through, the, um, of, through the alarms that was being sent uh, hourly from the meters. So this actually gives a lot of good payback to the customers in this installation. The second one I want to share with you is uh, on meter, uh, whether it's, whereby it's very accessible to so inside a, a lock gate or, or, or room or whatever, or even high up in the rooftop, um, this customer basically uh, deployed um, our walk by drive by solution to do building in the original case. But then they actually discovered that with our system, there's a lot of alarms that you can see on the right side. So besides doing the building, they actually can understand what's happening on the meter to say that if there's a backflow, leakage of broken pipe, all these alarms are being uh, alerted on the meter reader when they go by. And the um, walk-by, drive-by, the, the time taken to read every each meter is probably about one or two seconds. Yeah, So that's that's very efficient. And with this uh, information, which data coming from meters, uh, again, it can help the customers to reduce the apparent loss. All right, so the um, last case study is actually from India. Um, this type was actually done by my colleague uh, Amit, uh, credits to him. And what happened is that we actually got this uh, first India smart meter project uh, in Kuwait. It's about, uh, we supply about 275,000 meters. And the, the challenge for this, as you can see, some of the points are just highlight because of time constraint is that they have a lot of installation issue. Yeah, uh, Traditional meters are installed horizontally and, and once the install vertical, the accuracy is out. So they have a lot of losses in terms of apparent loss. And then they have a lot of airflow measurement issue, uh, especially in the water supply. So there are times whereby there's only one or two hours of water supply a day. 
So that really affect uh, the uh, the uh, the customers on the as far as the amount of rain water is concerned. And not to mention um, staying of meters because of the brass value uh, value thing. So this is these are a lot of the common uh, problem that uh, some of the customers actually can see in other other worlds. So what what do we do? So um, again we. We, as I mentioned, we supply about 275,000 of IPO. Yeah, IPO is smart static meters, sizes from 15 to 40, depending on the, the type of size. And in this particular location, we actually install uh, this one DMA, we install about 662 meters. And we actually do um, a logging in about 15 minutes. At the same time, we can also transmit every 15 minutes through this gateway. And in this instance, you can see that all the 662 meters are being monitored uh, by one single gateway using a high gate antenna. All right, so this is one DMA. And with this um, uh, fixed network, we are able to do water balancing. We will have one meter at the inlet on the DMA meter, and then we can actually compare it with the rest of 662 to do a, a hourly uh, balancing. In fact, 15 minutes balancing because of the intermittent water supply. So this is what we get. Uh, in the end, um, in this DMA, in fact, this is a published information in the website that you can visit. Um, there, there are about 662 uh, meters that install IPO, and then the unacknowledged flow uh, is essentially 80%. And after they implement this process of installing uh, smart meters, uh, pressure transmitters, doing leakage detection, all this effort, yeah, not only addressing apparent loss, but also real loss, they managed to bring it down to 22%. So this is actually a very uh, good success story that uh, smart meters together with uh, robust communications, they, uh, the customers now can see what's happening in the site. Even though it's minimum flow, we can still be able to do this water balancing to know, figure out how much losses is in the commercial losses and then uh, to help the customers to really look into uh, the whole NRW strategy. So it's actually a win-win situation between the, the, uh, the hardware, software, and also the analytical. And analytical is also playing a very big part in this uh, study as well. All right. In this, uh, I, I end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I think I, my voice, my voice was, was a bit soft uh, sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I apologize for that. Yeah, I, I think it's a connection issue, um, but, but that's all right. It, in the end, it, it got better. So, so thank you for that, in particular to the case studies, uh, which uh, obviously a lot of people can relate to, um, especially the ones that you presented uh, from India. Uh, we do have some Indians in the in participating at the moment, by the way. Um, you have some questions uh, from the floor. May I just read through? Uh, the smart meter is made of what material and can this withstand tampering and vandalism? Oh, um, for the IPER, which is our residential meters, is a composite body. And this composite dowry actually is, a, is an engineering plastic. And what happened is that we actually do a lot of drug tests yeah, um, before we actually commission the meters. So they are very um, rugged and not to mention it's not even deployed in India, right? So um, uh, the material wise, it's, it's very hardy material. And so is our um, coordinator as well. Uh, of course, the coordinator being a C9 meter, you will have a cast iron body. And what would be the price range of the DN15? <laughs> uh, I just tell okay, them to follow um, me separately. <laughs> it's a, it's a, okay, it's a, uh, it's an interesting question. Good, quick, I mean, good question because cost is always very important. And like what Paco mentioned of earlier on, right? What is the balance? Yeah. So I, I would say that obviously, uh, being a, a truly smart uh, static meter, um, the cost compared to a mechanical meter, uh, will be, will be, will be, will be quite a big gap. However, but if you were to add completion module onto the mechanical meter, yeah, the cost will go up, yeah, and at the end of the day, the difference are not very big, but the advantage is, 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 is immense. Why? Because in the integral meter, all the electronics are built in and they are optimized. That is why our battery life can last up to 15 years. And not to mention that it has IP68 rating. So again, everything 
enclosed, so the chances of tempering is very low. And that's, I think, that's one of the advantage uh, of uh, integral smart meter compared to the traditional uh, method. So based back to the price, obviously there's some premium, but, but I think the, the pricing is actually very subjective to the quantity of the project, yeah. W would customers be able to monitor consumption with their smartphone with these meters? Yes, yes. Uh, that's what I uh, I show uh, earlier on is that uh, um, if you have a AMI um, solution, so what you can do is that you can have a web portal, which is supported by Tabaso, by the way, for our simplest walk-by, drive-by. And this port vector allows you to log into the web portal, any phones, be it Android or iOS, to look at the so-called the dashboard, where be it a, a, in, a, in a region or individual meter. So all this can be done. And especially we can also have report function as well. And uh, can you give the accuracy percentage, linearity, and range of the ultrasonic technology? Um, I don't have the number offhand, but what you can, what we can appreciate is that obviously um, the I would, every uh, water, water meter will have a, what we call a flow curve. Yeah, a flow curve meaning from Q one to Q four. How does it behave? Uh, accuracy over flow rate. So um, compared to um, mechanical meter, the curve is more linear. But of course, magnetic flow meter will give the best uh, linear flow, uh, flow curve. So I would say that the flow curve of ultrasonic is very close to ultrasonic, uh, uh, um, um, electromagnetic. Okay. And is there an alert if the meter is broken? Um, for tempering. Okay, if uh, for any tempering, especially I was, was actually found more challenges about people trying to do magnetic tempering on the meter. Yeah, they, you know, people using a very strong magnet to try to disturb the, the measurement and all these are able to be captured and an, and an alarm will be sent out to notify the operate, operator that, hey, this is uh, some problem, uh, try, someone's trying to tempering with your equipment. So these are alarms that can be sent out to the operator. Okay, and a final question. What is the maximum impact resistance of these meters, especially in cases being pounded that could hamper operation? That I, I would, I would, <laughs> I think this is very similar to the earlier question. Um, again, I, I have to emphasize that uh, composite meters are not new, yeah? So they have been around for a long time, uh, especially in this part of the world whereby um, customers wants to avoid the brass meter body to be stolen. And they actually already uh, deployed a lot of this uh, um, composite uh, um, uh, meter body. So, and, and, and for us, what we do is that when we select this composite body, we actually go in for the best material and we do a lot of uh, static pressure tests. In fact, uh, some of the static, static pressure tests, uh, which is what I mean is that we actually inject pressure until the composite body rupture. All right. So based on those tests, actually it's very it's, it's actually comparable to even to brass body as well. So we are so we don't have a problem so far on on demanding uh, uh, um, lock, knocking you know of, of of the meters. But obviously, uh, uh, if a person really Smash the meter. I, I I think even a metal meter will will, will not be uh, will not survive. Break, of course. Especially metallurg metallurgy. Yeah, we are talking metallurgy because there's no point to have a good looking meter, but your metallurgy sucks. What I mean is that the meter under register. And final question: Is any battery life? Is there a battery life issue related to installation environment? If it's wet, if it's buried, uh, if it's near the shore. Right, this is a good question. Um, that is why, again, the integral meter design is very important because it's fully encapsulated and it's actually meet the IP68. And not to mention about humidity, especially in, this, in our part of the world, yeah, we have very high humidity. So yeah, to answer your question, uh, this actually protect the battery um, so that it can actually last as what it's supposed to do yeah, in about 15 or 20 years. So that is why integral uh, design is, is very important and you protect the battery in the sense. Okay, all right. With that, these are all the questions there are, unless 
you guys have questions, Paco and Kelvin, if you have questions uh, on your side. Well, I, I have one question for Kevin uh, about the ultrasonic meter. Uh, what is the, the sampling frequency that you have for the coordinate? Uh, two sample per second. Two sample per second. And how, how do you manage to with the battery? Because that's the usually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. Correct. Actually, actually, um, in, but in fact, even for our electronic, uh, electromagnetic uh, meters, if you can, if you can remember, uh, we actually uh, can handle up to fifteen years. Yeah. So, um, so I think one of the strength for sensors that we are, we have that um, uh, technology, technology um, know how to really miniaturize the electronics and especially on low power consumption, because we understand about the utilities customers whereby they want to put a meter out in the field to last as long as possible. Um, and, and that is being incorporated in our design and it's being tested. In fact, uh, the ICO has been around for more than 10 years and it's still functioning well. So yeah, so I think the important thing is that uh, for utilities that they need to really evaluate meters and, and, and get good partners and you can do a trial, you know, and, 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 and ask uh, work with them and, and find out more and, and so that you, you, can, you have confidence on, on the performance, yeah? So this is something I think very important for the, for the utilities. And one thing I want to add is that um, looking at the meters, yeah, um, I think we need to look also at the total uh, cost of the life cycle, meaning that when you buy the meters, how long will it last? So in this case, for a, um, be a, a electromagnetic or, or, or our ultrasonic or CNI, uh, it has a 15 to 20 years life cycle, and then it will never uh, stop because there's no moving part. So it will keep on giving you good, reliable revenue. In fact, you'll collect more revenue compared to mechanical because mechanical over some time, because of running dry, the under resistance comes in, then you're getting less revenue, right? So I think if you look at the total life cycle of these um, study meters, uh, it makes a lot of sense for customers uh, to, to do that. And lastly, I want to also mention that together with the complications and uh, analytics, you can do hourly um, data, which is very important, so that you can do water balancing. From there, you can actually know more about your network in terms of the apparent loss. And sometimes it may even help you on the real losses as well, because you are doing water balancing. So that saving may already pay for that um, good smart meters in the long run. May I ask a very short question? Uh, okay. Do you, sorry, uh, do you have a, a, a high cutoff flow for the ultrasonic meter? A high cutoff flow where the, it is stopped working at, at very high flows? If, if you have a, the, a which, which is it? Which value is it? Uh, okay, um, our meters basically comply to the ISO 4064 and in, inside that standard, they basically already qualified the Q3 and then the respective R ratio. Yeah, and also uh, if the respective uh, ratio for Q to derive Q4 and also um, Q1 because you know R ratio, right? So these are all already defined in the ISO uh, 4064 standard. So we definitely meet that requirement on flow on the flow rate. But at which flow it stop working? Uh, I, I need to show you the catalog. Maybe that oh, okay. helps you on that. We I can't plug numbers it. because different size will have different yeah. Q3, Q4, yeah? No, 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 I'm not talking about the Q4 because there is some ultrasonic meters that above four, Q4 stop working. Ah, they don't okay. measure anymore. Okay. I'm just talking about that. Okay. Okay. Understand. We can discuss later. Okay. Yes. Yeah, These are sure. meter experts when they're talking, it's well over my <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure the participants understood, which is great. Um, so, once yes. again, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time uh, and, and really. Uh, providing us with, with the depth of experience in, in this uh, field of um, uh, water loss management specific to uh, commercial losses, apparent losses, as you term them. Um, before I go to Arjun, I'd like to run a poll and understand whether the participants uh, were able to uh, appreciate what the, the hour and a half that we've been together. So please, uh, we just have one question for you. I'll give you a minute to respond. We have 118 uh, with us. Appreciate it if you could please 
uh, respond to the to the poll. Okay, I think uh, let's wait for a minute, three seconds. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you. Um, we have matched your expectations uh, as well as for some of you exceeded expectations. So thank you for that. Um, at this point, I would like to call on our chair, uh, Mr. Arjun Tampan, to provide a summary. I can hear myself. Mr. Thompson, please go ahead. Thank you, Mai. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Paco and Kelvin for a very informative set of presentations. Uh, the technical uh, actually went over my head, well, parts of them went over my head. But I'd like to put on my development hat, if you don't mind, uh, for, for a minute or two while, while uh, trying to wrap this up. I think uh, basically, as we've uh, just heard, uh, the whole business of smart metering is uh, really connected with the NRW exercise that we have discussed in, uh, in earlier uh, uh, webinars in this series. I mean, if you improve accuracies, it goes without saying that you uh, also reduce apparent losses. And as Kelvin showed very nicely in case study number three in Pune, in the pilot that you did, you were able to bring UFW down from 80% to about 22%. And I'm sure that you can go down even further. But uh, I think uh, what's important is uh, for uh, utilities in developing Asia to look to smart uh, metering, particularly if, as Paco said, your, uh, your basic requirements of minimum one bar pressure and uh, uh, tariff and uh, full supply are met, what is it that can be done to induce them to, uh, to, to take up smart uh, metering seriously? Uh, and when we are required to do a cost uh, benefit exercise, I think we must uh, look not just at financial costs and benefits, but also economic costs and benefits. I mean, take for example, the ability of a smart metered system to uh, ration consumption I mean, uh, the example of Cape Town is, is not so old in our uh, collective memories. We had Cape Town go down to 50 liters per capita per day. And that's the kind of rationing in a crisis that can be organized through smart meetings. Uh, similarly, uh, the other way you can do it is by time of use. You can specify hours of use when uh, you will be able to get a lower volume of flow than the regular volume, or this can also lead to time of day pricing of water, which is a very interesting concept that you can borrow from the energy sector and give consumers incentives to, uh, to use water at particular hours of the day as per their own convenience. Uh, and this leads me to the other benefit, which is uh, consumers in the context of a demand management scenario are able to identify efficiencies or inefficiencies uh, for themselves and are able to see how they can contribute better to lowering their consumption and therefore lowering their sustainable demand. Reduction in demand, of course, uh, we all understand is uh, beneficial at one level in the case of water conservation, for example, we are in a crisis situation, particularly with climate change. But on the other hand, some utilities may wish to argue that if you reduce demand, you reduce sales. But uh, I mean, it's, it's not a zero sum game because if you reduce sales and you have low tariffs, you're really not uh, getting uh, very far. But I think the, the important thing to understand here is that by going into uh, smart metering and by getting all the benefits that we've, we've just uh, 
discussed amongst ourselves, we are showing to, uh, to local governments, we are showing to the owners of the utilities and to our consumers that we are socially conscious that we are actually taking steps to, to deal with uh, the water crisis, uh, which has uh, been with us now for at least 10 or 15 years in Asia, and that uh, we are doing something that will help us address the root causes of this crisis. So with those words, thank you very much, uh, Paco and, and Kelvin, and also to all of you who have stayed on for this hour and a half to, 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 to be with us. Thank you very much. See you on. See you on November 4th. See you on November 4th. Yes. That's our okay. last in the series. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you.